Good evening. Today, we will be covering the post market update dated the 13th of August, 2024. Indian equity indices ended lower for the second consecutive session on August 13th with Nifty below 24,150 amid mixed macroeconomic data with CPI falling near to five-year low in July, while IIP growing at a slower pace at 4.2% in June. At close, the Sensex was down 692.89 points or 0.87% at 78,956.03, and the Nifty was down 208 points or 0.85% at 24,139. Titan Company, Apollo Hospitals, Dr. Reddy's Labs, Tata Consumer, HCL Tech were among major gainers on the Nifty, while Shriram Finance, BPCL, HDFC Life, HDFC Bank and Bajaj Finance were among the losers. Talking about the corporate segment, we have Shares of DOMS industry surged more than 4% to an all-time high of 2,545 rupees on August 13, following a robust performance in the April-June quarter. Since its listing seven months ago, the stock has more than tripled, soaring over 200% from its IPO price of 790 rupees per share. The stationery company reported a 49.5% year-on-year increase in net profit, reaching 54.3 rupees crore in quarter 1 financial year 2025, compared to 36.3 rupees crore in the same period last year. Consolidated revenue from operations rose 17.3% year-on-year to 445 rupees crore in quarter 1 financial year 2025. This growth led to a 17.3% year-on-year increase in EBITDA, reaching 445 rupees crore for the quarter ending June, with margins expanding sharply by 300 basis points to 19.4%. In quarter one, Scholastic Stationery remained the company's largest product category, contributing 43% to revenue, followed by Scholastic Art Materials at 25%, and Kits and Combos at 8%. Santosh Rave Shia, managing director of DOMS Industries, commented, The start of financial year 2025 has been promising, despite challenges from extreme weather conditions, particularly in North India during the June quarter. We continue to see strong sales growth and improved margins, reflecting our dedication to delivering exceptional value to our customers. In other news, the company's board has acquired a 51% stake in Skido Industries, which is currently raising one rupee crore through a rights issue to address working capital and capital expenditure needs. Shares of speciality chemicals maker Artai Industries are sharply lower in trade, down by as much as 14% on concerns over pressure on margins. The management spoke to analysts during a con call on August 12 and said they will be able to decide on the EBITDA guidance of 1,450 rupees crore only after assessing the global landscape. There has been fair amount of volatility in global prices and pressure of dumping from China. However, the volume growth guidance for the fiscal year has been maintained at 20 to 30 percent, though logistical concerns arising from disruptions in the Red Sea could hurt volume in some segments, the company admitted. Artai Industries said the company's discretionary portfolio continues to see recovery and bull round revival is anticipated later this fiscal year. The management is hopeful that a recovery of volumes and ramp up of capacities along with higher operating leverage should be able to drive EBITDA growth. Companies proposed CAPEX could take the debt on books slightly higher to 3,600 rupees crore, the management said during the analyst concall. Brokerage Emke has cut the financial year 2025 and financial year 2026 EPS guidance due to lack of clarity on EBITDA guidance. Morgan Stanley in its note on Artai Industries has given an equal weight call with a target price of 615 rupees per share, adding that the management has cited a significant competitive pressures, especially from China. Uncertainties regarding pricing too could weigh on the margins, Morgan Stanley notes said. The brokerage said an evolving product mix is the reason behind volatility in the margins. Shares of Electra Green Tech zoomed over 12% on August 13 after the firm reported its quarter one financial year 2025 earnings. The company's net profit soared 34% year on year to 24 rupees crore and revenue climbed 45% year on year to 314 rupees crore in the first quarter of financial year 2025. The company's earnings before interest, 
taxes, depreciation, and amortization climbed 4.4% year-on-year to 43.9 rupees crore in quarter 1 as against 42 rupees crore in the June quarter of the previous fiscal. Its earnings per share rose 33% year-on-year to 2.92 rupees in the quarter under review. Separately, the board of directors approved the reappointment of Venkatswara Pradeep Karamuru as managing director for a three-year term starting July 29, 2024, pending shareholder approval at the upcoming 24th annual general meeting. Additionally, the board appointed Subramaniam Sundar Rajan Vangal and Panda Ronga Vittol Elapavuluri as independent directors, additional directors, for five years, starting August 12, subject to shareholder approval. Electra Green Tech is engaged in the manufacturing of composite polymer insulators, electric buses, and electric trucks. It is also the largest manufacturer in India of silicone rubber composite insulators for power transmission and distribution networks. Shares of Oil India hit a new high at 691.60 rupees, gaining nearly 4% on the BSE in Tuesday's intraday trade, thus extending its past two-day rally after brokerages maintained a buy rating on the stock with a target price by up to 780 rupees. Meanwhile, global index provider, the MSCI on Tuesday in its latest index rejig for the month of August said it will add seven stocks including oil to its MSCI India Index, a part of the MSCI Global Standard Index. These adjustments will take place on August 30, 2024. According to a Nuvama report oil will receive inflows of up to $144 million. In the past one week, the stock price of oil has appreciated by 21% as against 0.34% decline in the BSE Sensex. Thus far in the calendar year 2024, the stock has zoomed 175% as compared to 9.3% gain in the benchmark index. Analysts at Ilara Capital maintain by a rating on oil with a target price of Rs 780 rupees per share on higher financial year 2026 EEV EBITDA assumption at 10.0x from 7.0x, led by expectations of strong production growth in the next five years. The company could double its gas production in the next five to six years, including existing plans to grow gas output by 50% through financial year 2024 to 26. Oil has plans to drill 100 wells in financial year 2027 versus 78 81sts in financial year 2025-26, 38-61 in financial year 2022-24, and build a gas pipeline to connect the stranded North Brahmaputra fields, 3 BCM capacity, equivalent to financial year 2024 gas production. This implies that oil is building gas infrastructure to support 100% growth in gas production, the brokerage firm said. The Western India Plywoods Limited in daily time frame is trading around 229.12 points with a change of 20% and is trading with a net volume of around 205.379 thousand shares. The share price is trading above its moving average 183.23, which is a good indication for the stock. While, shares are trading with a relative strength index of around 88.54. Kalaradan Trends Limited in daily time frame is trading around 62.60 points with a change of 19.92% and is trading with a net volume of around 1.515 million shares. The share price is trading above its moving average 49.02 which is a good indication for the stock. While, shares are trading with a relative strength index of around 73.16. Goldime International Limited in daily time frame is trading around 240.05 points with a change of 19.47% and is trading with a net volume of around 12.672 million shares. The share price is trading above its moving average 200.85 which is a good indication for the stock. While, shares are trading with a relative strength index of around 80.89. For the stock recommendation we have, Ardani Green Energy Limited looks good and can be bought at 1,826 rupees, keeping a stop loss of 1,772 rupees and a target of 1,883 rupees. You can reach us via phone, WhatsApp, or email using the information listed on the screen. Thank you for joining us today. If you found this video informative, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe for more financial insights.
And, as always, if you have any questions or topics you'd like us to cover in future videos, leave them in the comments section below. Until next time, happy investing!